Hello, my name is Vlad Gostomelsky. Uh, the presentation I have for you today is Attacking GoTenda Networks. Uh, quick disclaimer, uh, you should definitely try to not violate federal laws, FCC regulations, uh, applicable laws in your state and the country, all the good stuff. Uh, anything I say is my personal opinion and not the opinion of my employer, so uh, don't blame them. A uh, little bit of background, uh, I've been doing this professionally for 18 years, uh, doing vulnerability research, uh, attacking various wireless systems, uh, medical devices, uh, life critical devices, uh, and uh, infrastructure. Uh, for those of you not familiar with uh, GoTenda Mesh, this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about the first generation GoTendas, we're talking about uh, the second generation GoTenda Meshes. Uh, this is what's inside that lovely little uh, plastic case. Uh, for those of you in the wireless hacking village, something should jump right out at you. Uh, first of all, is that really amazing antenna uh, that you could swap out, which is, actually doesn't exist because it's a regulated device. Uh, uh, it does not require licensing, so it's severely limited by its power output. Uh, you're not uh, supposed to be able to add on an auxiliary antenna. Uh, of course, some folks have been uh, modifying them. Uh, second thing you should notice is that amazing tiny little battery, which uh, supposedly lasts 24 hours, but uh, uh, from the testing we've done uh, here at DEF CON, we're getting about three and a half hours, uh, especially with uh, the people that have been spamming the network. Uh, this is built as a uh, device that you could use when networks go down, when uh, everything else fails. Uh, the, so something you should notice is the waterproof seal on this case, which also doesn't exist. It's basically uh, ultrasonic welded together, which means if uh, there's pouring rain and flooding, again, these devices don't seem to survive very well. Uh, so why are we doing a talk about attacking something that's supposed to be the backup network when everything fails? Uh, well, first of all, the only way to see if something is, uh, really has any business being an emergency communication device is to see whether or not their claims are true. And they're touted as an emergency infrastructure. Uh, they've received quite a bit of FEMA funding. Uh, they've, uh, they're being deployed at some of the large ski resorts uh, to help people uh, find their families in the mountain, but also to be used during uh, emergency communications. Uh, New York City uh, actually is giving away quite a few of these to businesses that were previously impacted by Sandy. So again, a uh, large metropolitan area, eight plus million people who are gonna re be relying on it as critical infrastructure when there is no cell phone service. Uh, so Gotenna has had uh, an opportunity to become uh, emergency infrastructure in Puerto Rico. Uh, we have not had uh, a lot of good data coming back uh, about what, how well it's working. It's kind of been scattered because, well, right now things are still uh, mostly down. Uh, but uh, from what I've been able to find online, it has not uh, been very encouraging. Uh, we're going to go through some of those things. Uh, quick specs, uh, interesting things of note. Uh, you'll see the amazing output of one watt. Uh, not exactly what you want to see in uh, emergency infrastructure. Uh, ISM radio band, uh, 900 uh, uh, megahertz roughly ISM, uh, covers both region one and two. Uh, it can work with uh, cellular interlink if you pay for the premium subscription. Uh, we're gonna get into that. Uh, again, if this is emergency infrastructure and the cellular goes down, then so does your cellular interlink. So again, not very helpful. Uh, compare that with a typical handheld uh, walkie-talkie that covers uh, VHF, UHF bands, somewhere in five, uh, five watt range, uh, in some cases a lot more if uh, you buy from uh, certain shady Chinese manufacturers. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're able to uh, have APRS, which is an automatic position reporting system. Uh, makes the radio quite a bit more expensive, but again, it gives you actual digital radio that you can connect to your computer, you can send messages, you can send positioning data. You actually have a, a GPS that's built into the radio. Uh, it's an open standard, so you're not locked into a dinky little plastic device. Uh, it's an open standard, so you have interoperability. You can use multiple manufacturers, multiple uh, uh, different components that you can clutch together, uh, even uh, just doing plain radios and uh, open source software in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and of course, again, if you buy uh, radios from certain shady manufacturers, uh, you could do out-of-band operations uh, covering MERS bands, ISM bands, uh, in some cases even police frequencies, which you should definitely not transmit on, but receiving is obviously fine, depending where you are. 
Uh, cost of entry, uh, this morning, the Otana mesh was 179 bucks. Uh, Bay of Fang radios were still $22 and Amazon Prime delivered to your door. Okay, sorry, yes, so it's uh, 179 for two Gotanas, correct, but you need two of them to work. If I have one Gotana, then uh, I can't call this gentleman because he may not have a Gotana, so. Uh. Correct, yes, you have a wide community of uh, ham radio users as opposed to people who just bought into this closed ecosystem. And of course, all the police officers who are not uh, linked to the repeater at the moment. Uh, looking at uh, Kenwood radios, you have an actual digital uh, modem, uh, again, built-in GPS, something that you could use without a cell phone being connected. Uh, basic operations, uh, first thing you need to install the GoTen application on the phone, uh, which becomes rather difficult if uh, uh, the internet is down. So even if you were to airdrop uh, GoTenna somewhere, uh, the instructions start out with fully charge your GoTenna. Well, power is down. Then you download the application from where internet is down. Uh, you connect your phone to the Gotenna, and you turn on the Gotenna essentially, and then you could uh, connect with other users and your messages can uh, travel hop to hop. Uh, for, uh, the reason I put down is X number of hops. Up until a few weeks ago, uh, it was uh, three hops. Uh, last update, they pushed it out to six hops. Uh, again, because of propagation issues, because uh, you're only getting a few city blocks if you're really lucky uh, with uh, these radios. Uh, looking at uh, the FEMA website, uh, this is what they demand from emergency infrastructure. It needs to be resilient, meaning it'll uh, stay up even if there's flooding, uh, if there's uh, monsoon rains, earthquakes. Uh, it needs to be robust. Uh, it needs to be secure, reliable, and that last one, open standard. Uh, I haven't seen any other radios that work with uh, GoTenna Mesh, so again, that it fails on that point alone before we even examine the secure portion a little bit deeper. Encryption. Encryption is handled in a cell phone application, not in a device. Uh, that means it opens up the uh, iPhone and Android devices to attacks. Uh, you know, there's been two major updates to the GoTen application, uh, so we had to scramble to do a kind of a source code review while we were here at the conference. Uh, so uh, we we're going to be publishing an update set of slides with actual issues that we found in there. Uh, what I can tell you is that we have uh, initialization vector issues uh, in the uh, open source script that they're using. Uh, there's key storage issues. Once the key is actually generated, it's uh, stored in a way that's essentially accessible to many other applications on the device. So if you have a malicious application or if you don't fully trust the government in the area where you're running the application, the key could be extracted uh, and moved to another device. Uh, and we have implementation issues. The algorithms that they're using are sound and peer reviewed. However, their implementation is flawed. Uh, one of the big features they tout for connectivity, again, is GoTenna plus SMS Relay. So if somebody is, play, is uh, paying for a premium subscription, they're using somebody else's device for backhaul and uh, using cellular connectivity, uh, which is really great if you're uh, in the middle of a city and everything's working fine. Uh, not so useful if uh, cell phone towers are down. When somebody's doing a default install, the GID, which is the global unique identifier, by default is set to be your cell phone number. Again, uh, not really great for anonymity. Uh, it is possible to set the GID manually, but it's not very straightforward. You essentially have to know that you want to do this and go back and do it. Uh, so if you're in a large network such as here at DEF CON, uh, we've been uh, harvesting quite a few phone numbers, so even the audience here uh, has been using phone numbers. We haven't uh, called up those people to verify if they're indeed the GoTenna users, but in large cities they typically are. Uh, public shout, uh, again, uh, the phone numbers go out in clear, uh, clear text, uh, and emergency broadcasts include uh, the GID as well as somebody's GPS location or somebody's last known GPS location. Uh, so your cell phone application is leaking data. Uh, there's been a really fun application released in the iOS store, which is the Mesh Developer Toolkit. Uh, so we've been uh, able to do open source recon and uh, developers who are working on the go to the mesh devices and essentially locating them physically on the map and their, and their go tennis. Uh, so we have a nice comprehensive map of where they are located in New York City, uh, where they go out to lunch with their phones still running the application. Uh, 
we're going to see if you want to release the full list or not. So uh, we took the default screenshots uh, uh, from California, but I think we're going to release the New York map. Uh, we mentioned uh, the GID briefly. Uh, by default, it's the phone number. Uh, it's totally non-alphanumeric. It is user configurable. Uh, so that decreases the attack surface if you want to iterate through all the cell phone numbers. The GoTenant Mesh application, the official one, does limit how many direct messages you could send. But since it's an open SDK, uh, you can go out there and be an asshole and grab uh, 500 uh, API keys and just start spamming the whole network for hours and hours. And there's absolutely nothing that anybody can do to stop you. And of course, there's no authentication, so it's not like you can kick me off the network. Uh, one of the uh, most fun GID attacks that we implemented, uh, by the way, if you're in this room, you may have noticed that your Gotenna connectivity has dropped uh, significantly, uh, is the GID attack. The way it works is it bases the hop count on the GID of the device, the global unique identifier. Uh, however, you can pair multiple antennas to have the same GID. So, for example, I have a device with GID of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I'm a good citizen. I'm helping you broadcast on a network. But wait, this device has the same GID, and this device, and possibly his device. Now all of a sudden you have messages uh, drawn essentially round robbing in the same network. Uh, their packet count is dropping. Uh, so I receive a message, and the repeat uh, hop count is 6. And if we broadcast it, drops the packet count to five. Then this radio gets and says, it repeats it with the same GID, drops the packet count to four. This radio receives it, drops the packet count to three. So now the distance your message can propagate has been dropped to essentially half of what it would have been with the distance of what's in my cargo pocket. Again, non resilient infrastructure. And just to reemphasize, uh, emergency situations, it could be a nation state level attack. It could be a bunch of Saudi citizens that got on a plane and intentionally caused uh, a grid down situation. Uh, so if you can implement an attack that drops your emergency infrastructure uh, for the cost of under $200, that is not robust. Uh, if you want to play with this attack, uh, what you need to do is you need to set up one Gotenna with uh, your friend's GID. Uh, so essentially find out, find out somebody who's using Gotenna, set up their phone number, uh, so pair the Gotenna, turn off the, the Gotenna you've been using, and pair a new Gotenna. So essentially you're telling the app that you dropped off the old Gotenna without deleting the GID uh, from the actual radio. So this lets you bypass the controls within the application that prevents the GID attack. Uh, if they ever do fix an application, what you do is you stop by uh, and pick up a few burner phones, uh, $20, $30 phones, and you set up the application with the custom GID uh, being exactly the same. Uh, another really funny thing is uh, if you program your friend's GID, uh, because these uh, devices are meant to work uh, offline, it doesn't do proper certificate validation. So if you know that your friend is supposed to do a secret rendezvous with somebody else and you set up their GID and you go there in their place, you will receive the direct messages that are meant for them that are supposed to be encrypted and your device will successfully uh, decrypt them because as I mentioned, there's an initialization vector issue uh, with a how go that does encryption. Uh, there's been a major firmware update on August 7th. Uh, they finally pushed the fix for version 1. Uh, it, uh, last time you heard uh, vulnerabilities for version 1 released over a year ago, uh, right here in Wireless Hacking Village last year. So if you're talking about robust uh, infrastructure, over a year to fix uh, serious security vulnerabilities is uh, not really what you want to see from uh, critical infrastructure. They pushed both an app and firmware update. Uh, the new firmware has been over 32 megabytes, so we have not, a chance, uh, have not had a chance to fully sink our teeth into it, which is why we're going to be uh, pushing the updated version of the slides in the forums. Uh, as I mentioned, they are using known good ciphers. Uh, the ciphers themselves have been peer reviewed, however, the implementation that the Go 10 is using has not been uh, uh, peer reviewed. Uh, I've let them know about this as far back as October 17th, so I don't feel really too bad about releasing information here or uh, publishing exploits. Uh, the response basically has been, well, if you don't like it, why don't you write something better? And my response is, you are the guys who are 
pushing out the uh, robust uh, uh, architecture and saying that this is secure and this is what people should be using. Uh, the attack vectors that we have are the phone application itself. If you have other uh, malicious uh, applications on the phone, uh, they can actually interact with the application. Uh, we have not found any malicious application on third party app stores yet, but that doesn't mean there won't be by the time this talk is done. Uh, we have uh, Bluetooth attacks. Uh, there's been a really cool Bluetooth uh, rebinding attack, uh, which means if somebody is sitting here and has their uh, a go tandem with them, you can uh, force their phone to unbind the Bluetooth connection and essentially take over their uh, go tandem. Uh, you have USB attacks. Uh, USB debug is actually still turned on on these go tandems. So if you have physical access and you find somebody's uh, repeater node that's been placed in a strategic high location, uh, you can actually reprogram it and leave it there and nobody will be the visor. Uh, you actually can uh, mess with other Gotenna nodes. Uh, uh, we've been playing with fuzzing over the Gotenna protocol and the Gotenna meshes have not been robust at all. We've had uh, numerous antennas uh, lock up uh, and uh, we've been able to save them with a firmware update over the air. Uh, but uh, you could certainly go around and uh, crash other Gotennas over the Gotenna mesh protocol. Uh, you can also uh, push malicious firmware updates over the air because uh, these devices are not doing proper certificate validation. Uh, who here has seen zombies? I'm talking about real life zombies. This is what zombies look like when the power goes down. People just mindlessly stare at their screen hoping the bar will show up even if they see that the cell phone tower is pulled over in half. When you see zombies, you tell your dog to get her gun. <laughs> and then you start building infrastructure. This is what keeps communications up. This is what helps hospitals communicate. This is what helps emergency services actually respond even in a grid down situation. This is a toy. This does not. Again, backup infrastructure, toy. Uh, in an emergency situation, uh, I can hand you a radio even though you, you may, though you may not have a ham radio license and now all of a sudden you can connect to, uh, uh, to emergency services, you can communicate with other uh, uh, ham radio users, uh, with police officers. If I were to hand you a GoTenna, uh, if you do not previously have the application installed in your store and don't have all the firmware updates, the GoTenna is completely useless. Any questions? We have not uh, found an F droid, uh, so they've pushed a number of uh, updates recently. So the, the Go 10 app for version 1 is up on F droid, uh, but not uh, the latest updates. The, the F droid uh, store is about three versions behind right now. Uh, they're very significant, uh, so they use different frequencies. Version 1 did not include any kind of a meshing. Uh, they had a better robust antenna, uh, physically speaking, however the antenna was less efficient. So the new devices, even though they're using less power, uh, actually do have better range. And as I mentioned, they have meshing. Right now, if everything works correctly, they can do six hops, versus the old version was direct point-to-point -point communication. Uh, they've updated their API twice since then. So yes, they're able to push more data between it. Uh, that's how they were able to uh, add the cell phone backhaul. Uh, so they, because they changed the protocol, it's been both a change in the application uh, and the firmware. I still have not had a chance to dig into uh, what they're doing with the version 1 that they pushed four days ago because I've been too busy updating uh, slides for the version 2. Any other questions? Uh, essentially, use the GID uh, for the private key. Uh, uh, 
Uh, correct, but neither does the other user. So essentially when you're operating offline, uh, if I walk up to you and it looks like I have the correct GID, since your phone doesn't, uh, doesn't already have my certificate, it will just uh, automatically trust it. Correct, yes. Thank you everyone for coming.